Hey, greetings, uh, my name is Gabriel Akeem. I'm with God Will Provide International Mission and I'm here in Vienna, Austria right now. It is February 17th, 2014 and we're recording a testimony about my life for, for edification to bring glory to the name of Jesus about what he has done in my life and from where he has pulled me out of. Before I start my testimony, I'm going to want to just read a spot from the Bible and then I will talk to you and share with you my testimony where I came from. So please bear with me as I read from, from the scripture. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 15 verses 11 through uh, 32 this is the parable of the lost son and over here it talks about the son that that went away from the father and then ended up coming back so verse 11 a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portions of good that falls to me so he divided to them his livelihood and not many days after the younger son gathered all together journeyed to a far country and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living but when he had spent all there arose a severe famine in that land and he began to be in want um, i'm going to stop right here and i'm going to start my testimony i was born in los angeles california on march 24 1987 i was born into a, a christian family and my father as he raised me he he taught me all the things all the good things in life I had to do in order to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, in order to, to get to heaven one day, in order to work for God, He gave me all this knowledge. He, he taught me right from wrong. He gave me that, that part of the estate you can say like the Father gave to the sons. But there came a point in my life when, when I was about 14, 15 years old that I wanted to go and experience the world myself. I wanted to to try drugs. I wanted to to live just a, a ungodly life. I wanted to go experience everything this world has to offer. So I started off with uh, smoking marijuana. It became a, a very daily thing, marijuana and cigarettes at a very young age. Like I said, about 14, 15 years old, it was it was already a habit. It was already something I was doing continuously, something that I did every single day with, with my friends from the world. These were friends who did not know God, who did not grow up in the church, but these were people I, I attached myself to because I saw in them people who had no limits, people who, who were very bad people. We, we had kind of our own group of, of friends. You could call it a gang. We were, we were always together. We were always getting into fights together. We always had each other's back. And, and the drugs we had and, and the money we would gather, we would share it. It was, it was like a brotherhood. It was, it was really like a gang. And even though there was this loyalty amongst us, it was at the same time we were, we were united by the bad things we were doing. We were united by the criminal activities. And at 16 years old, is when I first encountered cocaine. 16 years old, I started doing cocaine with this group of friends and it wasn't, at first it wasn't a daily habit, but then it came time where we were doing it maybe three times a week, maybe we would stop for a couple weeks and, and then we would get back into it. And, and from this cocaine, it led very fast into a, a narcotics a pills, Oxycontin and, and Vicodin and Methadone and from there, it was only a matter of time before I got into heroin. And heroin is this, is this drug that, that really started taking control of my life. It, it really started to impact my, my way of thinking. I no longer had morals. I no longer had ethics. I no longer cared for other people. There, there was times where we would go in and fight with people. And there was a time when we were in a cemetery and we were fighting about 30 on 30. It was... It was my group of friends against another group of people. They had 30 something people. We had 30 plus people and we were fighting in the cemetery. And I just remember people are getting knocked out. I mean, they are lying unconscious on the floor. We would just pick them up. We'd carry them to the side and we'd continue fighting. And, and I remember leaving this place and my knuckles are just full of blood. And in the back of my head is, is a bunch of bumps and knots and, 
and I remember just thinking like, man, I just escaped from somewhere without really getting uh, hurt really bad. There was a couple people in that fight who who got hurt really bad. I mean, broken limbs and, and broken jaws and broken hands. And I remember just thinking that God protected me, even though I was going so much against him, his, his hand was still upon me. He was still, he was still protecting me, but this wasn't enough for me. I, I remember going on and a couple weeks later, because of this fight, there was still a lot of anger. There was still a lot of things going on and people were calling each other let's meet up and fight some more we didn't settle our differences and i remember going to meet a group of people somewhere and we were so angry we were so mad at these people because of, of something they had done to one of our friends that we went with just one group of people and the rest of the people hid somewhere and when they showed up and they saw that there wasn't that many of us they got a little happy and we said let's go around back of this building and we go back there to, to settle our differences, to have a fight. And we're calling our friends at this point, telling them to come over. And they come around this building and we have all our group of friends there. And I remember just surrounding these people and, and we start to fight with them. A, a couple of their guys didn't want to fight. They, they got scared and so we left them alone. We understood that we're not, we're not gonna pick on them if they don't want nothing to do with this. But the people who were really arrogant, really prideful, we jumped on them. And, and I remember at one point we had a guy up against the wall and everybody's just hitting him. And he, he drops to the floor and I see a guy run up and just jump with his heel right on the guy's jaw. And, and you just hear the crack as the guy's jaw hits the concrete and he starts going into seizures. He starts convulsing. He he was losing consciousness and at the same time his body was just going into shock and i remember looking at this person and i'm thinking like man we're we're about to kill him like we're about to end this person's life right now and, and this is something serious this is something we could all go to prison for a really long time and somebody just yelled let's get out of here cops are coming so everybody ran to their cars we took off out of there and i remember just thinking again that that God is, is looking down on us and God is protecting us from certain things. But at the same time, we have to do something that, that we can't keep continuing this lifestyle because if we keep continuing, we're going to end up either dead ourselves or in prison for the rest of our life. And as this was all going along, my, my addiction started to get out of control. I started to, to lose everything. I, I started to sell everything I could. I, all, all my cars, my money, my clothes, everything that I had that was worth something, I was just giving it up for drugs. I was giving it up to get high. I was giving it up to get more and more heroin because I had become so addicted, I couldn't, I couldn't go without it. It was, it was already about four years of, of abusing heroin every day. And it got to a point where I had to sell drugs in order to support my habit in order to be able to get high every day i had to to sell a lot of drugs i was i was using hundreds of dollars of drugs a day so it wasn't enough just to make a uh, fifty dollars or a hundred dollars a day i really had to sell a lot of drugs and make a lot of money and all that money just went to drugs and so i started getting involved with with the group of people who were bringing in drugs from a different part of America by Mexico on the border there, they were getting them really cheap and they would bring them up north. And the more up north you go in America, the more expensive these drugs were getting. And I just got really involved with these people. I became really deep in with them. They, they, they took me in, they liked me a lot and they would give me really good deals on these drugs. And it got to a point where I was doing a, a lot of drug deals selling thousands of dollars of drugs a day but all the profit i made all the money was just going to me it was just going to support my my drug habit i wasn't able to raise any money i wasn't able to to do anything with this money and there came a point where i got arrested and i got charged with distribution charges which means that basically i was i was distributing drugs i was selling drugs and because of these charges, I got two charges. They both carry 14 uh, years in prison total, seven years each. 
And I remember sitting there in jail and, and I just start crying to God. I just start praying to him that, that he will pull me out of this. And, and I remember I promised God that I will never go back into drugs. Just pull me out of this jail. Just, just take me out and, and show me that you're there. And, and I'm not going to ever do drugs again. And I basically, I admitted to the crime, but in order for me to get charged, there, there had to be a trial. So they released me on, on pre-trial. And I remember that as soon as I got out of there and I had my phone in my hand and, and I had the money, it was just a couple hundred dollars that I had on me at the time. They, they took all the drugs that they found, but the, the money they gave back to me. And I remember getting out of there and I walk out of the jail and, and I was faced with this decision, what do I do? Do I, do I hold that promise I made to God or do I go back and get high? And because I wasn't ready, because I wasn't fully sincere before God, I chose to go get high. And I remember calling this person and they came and picked me up and we went and, and we spent a couple hundred dollars again on drugs. And, and right away, straight out of jail, I just went right back into the drugs. And I didn't like it anymore. It wasn't the same as before. There was something inside of me that was telling me that you had made this promise to God and, and you got to do something about it. So what I did is I went to a bunch of rehab centers in, in America, uh, detox centers they call, and, and I would go stay there a couple days. I would detox, I would get clean, and then I would leave there and, and right away I would get high again. I would take these pills that were supposed to get rid of your withdrawals, that were supposed to get you away from heroin. But as soon as I ran out of the pills, I went back into heroin. And I remember I heard one day from a friend of mine about a rehab center in Portland, Oregon, in, in the United States of America. And he says, this is a Christian rehab center where they're not going to give you anything for your withdrawals, where they're just going to pray for you, where you have Bible studies all day long, where you have work hours, you go to church and you do all these things. And he said, but it really works. It, it transformed my life. And I thought to myself, you know, maybe I'm going to go give this place a try. Maybe I'm going to go give it a shot. But inside my head, I was telling myself, I'm only going to stay uh, a week, maybe two weeks. And so I called this place and after a month, I get into the program. And I get into this program and I just remember that right away, I, I walk into this place and everybody's so welcoming. All these people who, who used to be ex-drug addicts, all these people who used to be in the, in the world who, who were bad people like myself, they just welcomed me right in. You know, they shook my hand, they gave me a hug, they said, welcome to the center, this is what we're all about. I just felt like, like I was wanted, like I was welcomed somewhere, that I was no longer cast out. People were no longer scared to be around me. People were no longer fearful of me, but, but they accepted me in. And I stay at this place and right away in that first night we had a prayer and, and I just feel the presence of God in, in that prayer and it just, it moved me and, and I wanted to cry. I wanted to do something, but because I was so prideful, I just couldn't. I just, I couldn't allow myself to be broken by God. And, and I remember just saying, you know, I'll wait a couple days. I'll see how bad the withdrawals are. And if I can't stand the withdrawals, I'll leave. But something very interesting happened is my withdrawals were not intense as they were in the world. In the world, when I had withdrawals, after about three, four hours of not having any drugs, I would start to withdraw so bad that I couldn't even, I couldn't even really function. I couldn't move. If I woke up in the morning and didn't have any drugs in three hours, four hours passed without drugs, I wouldn't even be able to get out of bed anymore. I'd be, I'd be so dead, so drained. And I remember that in this place, God just started giving me energy. And I was, I was able to, to walk around. I was able to, to do things. I was able to play basketball. I was able to, to run a little bit, but I still wasn't sleeping at night. And at night I would go into the prayer room and I would just cry out to God over there in this prayer room. And something very interesting happened as, as I started going to this prayer room. 
And I want to stop really quick and read, read some more from this parable and then I will continue and tell you what happened. So continue on in, in Luke 15. This son, he ends up getting into a state where he's working for somebody and he has no food. So he's only eating the food that, that the pigs are fed. He's, he feeds the pigs and he sees that they're eating better food than him. So he starts to eat their, their food. And he says one day, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. And I want to stop right there and I just want to share with you. I came into these prayer rooms at night and at the night prayer we had at the center and this prayer room after the prayer I would just go into this room and I would just start crying out to God and there was moments where where I couldn't even pray but I was just weeping and and I was just asking God for forgiveness I was just I was telling God that I'm no longer worthy to be called your son but but just treat me as one of your servants just please forgive everything I did and and just give me a place, just give me, give me life, just fill me with your presence, just at least give me forgiveness. At, at this point, I wasn't, I wasn't even trying to, to be working for God, I wasn't even trying to get into ministry, I wasn't even trying to receive the Holy Spirit, but I just wanted to, to be forgiven of everything. I just wanted to be taken care of, not that I'm somebody, not that I'm even worthy to be called a son, but as a servant. And I remember in a prayer one day, after me being there for a couple months, I just start crying out to God and, and I tell God that I want to take off all this nasty stuff. I want to take off all this dirty sin. I just want to take it off. I said, God, just take it off and, and clothe me with a, new, with a new robe. Just give me a new shirt. Just give me new clothes, God, that, that are white, that are pure that no longer has this sin and I remember God just touching me in that prayer and I believe that's where I received repentance that's where where God just finally forgave me and where he he just presented me with a clean slate and I remember coming from that prayer and the next day I was really fired up but then the second day I just didn't feel God's presence anymore and and I didn't know why, I didn't know what to do. And I started to dwell on all these old thoughts and I started thinking about leaving. I said, man, I don't feel all of a sudden, God, you forgive me, but now I don't even feel your presence anymore. I don't feel you touching me anymore. I don't feel you around here anymore. I feel like I'm walking by myself. And after about four or five days, I just got to a point where I was so sick of it, I wanted to go back into sin. I, and I had all these ideas in my head about how I was going to sell drugs and how I was going to make money and how I was going to do all these things that I did before. But this time I was going to be smart and this time I wasn't going to get caught and this time I wasn't going to use drugs. I'm just going to sell them. I'm just going to make a lot of money. And this is, this is a lie of the devil because I have seen a lot of guys go into into jail and every time when we're in jail we'd be talking about how we're never going to use drugs again and we'd be waiting in the transport room to get released to and everybody's talking about their plan that they have that they're going to go do this and they're going to make money and they're going to stay clean but as soon as we would get released and, and we would be there and we would grab the phone and call somebody every single person always called somebody right away said come pick me up I, I want to go get high I want to go do this all these plans they just made everything was just gone it's, it's just, it's a very powerful lie of the devil and the devil uses it to pull people away from God. And so I remember, I remember battling with this and I was at a Friday church service one day and I just get so sick of everything. I stand up to leave and I walk outside and I tell God, if, if you want me here, then send somebody to talk to me and God sends a brother to talk to me and 
I don't believe it. I'm, I'm telling him, no, this is not from God. And I tell God, God again in my head, I say, God, if this is from you, send somebody else. And God sends another brother. And he starts talking to me. And two more brothers come. And everybody's talking to me, telling me, let's pray. You need to stay. The devil's trying to pull you out. And I finally just go into the hallway with them at church. And we start to pray. And, and I just start telling God exactly how it is. I didn't come at him with big words. I didn't come at him with all these things. But I just start telling God, look at the state I'm in. I don't want to be here anymore. I have tried with all my strength. And, and this is where my strength took me. It took me to a spot where I can't, I can't stay. Where I need your Holy Spirit. I need your power behind me. I need you in my life to guide me. I need you to be the strength inside of me. And the brothers stopped to pray and they said, do you want to receive the Holy Spirit right now? Do you want to receive the gift of tongues and everything? And I say, yes. And we go into a room and we start to pray. And after some time, the, the Holy Spirit just comes over me and it just takes over. And I receive the gift of tongues and I receive just, just this joy, just this power came inside of me. And, and I was cleansed. I was freed from, from all the addictions, from all these things that held me back, from all the bad, evil thoughts. Everything was just cleared away in that moment when, when the Holy Spirit uh, came down upon me. And I want to go back and, and I'm going to finish up pretty soon here. And the father says to, the, to his servants, he says, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. And this is what happened to me, is God picked me up from that moment on, this I came to the rehab center in December 2nd of 2010 and in March 11th of 2011 is when God gave me his gift of the Holy Spirit, is when it came over me, is when I, I just received that full on freedom. And, and God basically, he did the same thing to me like this father did to his son. He took away everything that was bad about me and just threw it out. And he started giving me all these good things. And I became involved in this mission. I finished the rehab program. I became a, a counselor and a leader at the rehabilitation program. And I lived there 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And, and I love it. This is my calling in life. And I... I understand that I have to give back to God now and that my calling from God is, is to do this work, is to be an example, is, is to testify about what He has done in my life. And the most important thing for me was that it was not me that did this. You know, if it was up to me that day, I would have left. I would have went I would have went back into the world. I would have went back into sin. I would have started selling drugs again. I would have done all these things if if it was up to me. But in that moment when I just asked God to take over, in that moment when I just asked God to open my heart and allow the Holy Spirit to come in. And the Holy Spirit came in. In that moment God freed me of all those things. And I'm standing here today as as a living testimony to you about what God can do for you. If you just ask God to open your heart, if you just ask God to come inside and, and to cleanse you, to clean out all the dirty, all the nasty things, and to just fill you with His Holy Spirit, which is so pure, which is so clean, which just leads you into Him, then He will do it. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you can't pray this big prayer with, with big words. That's not what God wants. He just wants you to come at Him simply. He wants you to come at him like I did that day and, and just tell him, look, I'm a man. I'm thinking of sinning. I'm thinking of committing crimes again. I'm thinking of, of doing all these bad things. And, and I, I don't want this anymore, God. I want you to cleanse me. I want you to change me. I want you to transform me. If you do this for God, he will do to you what this father did to his son. He will bring you home. He will give you a new robe. He will, he will feed you. And He will give you a future. He will give you a vision. And He will give you a hope for your life. So my prayer is, is that for everybody who hears this testimony, that this testimony brings edification. That this testimony causes somebody to glorify God. Because I'm not sharing these things for myself to tell you something I did. But I'm sharing this to tell you what God did 
for me when I asked him to work in my life. Because it was, if it was up to me, I would fail. I would not be able to do any of these things. But God, because He's awesome, God, because He loves us, and God, because He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross to take away my sins, He wants to do these things. And it's, He showed us that when He gave Jesus Christ. So if we just accept Jesus Christ, and we just ask Him to transform our lives because he is, he is a good God. He will do these things. So I pray that everybody who listens to this be blessed. And, and I just pray that you all seek Jesus Christ. And Amen.